Yes, sir. Or Declan, either one, like if there's background noise. All right, you're good to go. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Kevin Coyne. I'm the founder of Tech Ranch from Austin, Texas. I'm excited to present, uh, or we're we're ramping up our Venture Outfitter Weekly programs again to make sure that we share uh, with the world what's going on in the Austin area, as well as specific targeted opportunities to plug into. Now, today's opportunity is going to be talking, we're going to be working with uh, the state of Chihuahua, Startup Chihuahua and Chihuahua Global. Um, but everyone is welcome to be a part of this, this, this process, this broadcast. In fact, you might find that an opportunity in the, the conversation itself, even though we're going to be talking about some, some specific initiatives between the state of Chihuahua and what's happening here in Central Texas in Austin, um, there will be opportunities for, for entrepreneurs and startups around the world, as well as other um, regional areas to plug into the activities we're talking about. I'll make sure that I talk about that at the very end about actions you can take to plug into the information that we're sharing. Uh, but it is my honor to be here and to be working with the state of Chihuahua on the behalf of 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 the work that we're going to do we're going to talk deeper into the austin innovation and entrepreneurship ecosystem let's just hop right in so the first thing to do in you know is is my as a background of being a tech visionary a part of my concern is where is the world moving to and there's a number of different disruptions this is just a handful of the disruptions that are happening in the market right now there's a lot of others that uh, as i presented different information about what I see happening. You know, a lot of times people will say, well, what about this? What about this? What about this? I think everyone recognizes that there's a number of disruptions that we have to make sure that we deal with of what's happening in the market. The shift to electric vehicles, the, the impact of AI. No one could have imagined a year ago about the impact of AI and what's what it's shifting so quickly. There continues to be difficulty in the U.S.-China relationship, and because of that, trade relations have changed, and there's this like massive shift away from manufacturing in China, and so we look at what might happen. Uh, the uh, President Biden's policies, we're going to see the impact in today's presentation about what's been happening with that and some recent news that's happened in the last 48 hours concerning that. And then this opportunity between Texas and Mexico, and we'll say wider about the United States and Mexico, about this, this massive opportunity in front of us. In fact, just a few weeks ago, many people don't know that Mexico displaced China as the United States number one trading partner. And so back and forth, it's really interesting times, but the technology disruptions we're looking at and also the trade disruptions that are happening, the opportunity that's infused underneath that. And that's partially what I wanna speak about as we talk about the opportunity in Austin, Texas. The, uh, the thing that we wanna do though, is we wanna look at this um, in the eighties, Detroit was not ready for what happened. And it, I, I use this as a reminder because many people don't recall or they don't know the history that Detroit was the technology capital of the world for about 60 years. And then all of a sudden it ground to a halt and it became, it really had a lot of difficulties. And I don't, I'm not trying to pick on my colleagues in Detroit by any means. It's just more to say that when technology disrupts, as much as it is right now, we really have to look at what's there. And part of the reason I mentioned about this is I want to share about what I see happening with Austin and part of the Austin history that both I had problems with as an engineer who graduated from UT with honors, but still had difficulty getting a job in Austin in 1990 and 1991. 
to then the environment that creates this really rich environment that we're in right now. And part of what we look at with the disruption is this, understanding that first disruption that I had on the, the column, the five. You know, if you have a gas car, you've got, you know, my understanding is like, you know, you've got more than 100 moving parts. Actually, you have, uh, in, in some counts, 3,000 parts in the engine. And you're going to a electric vehicle. There's this is one of the one of the trends that's happening. Electric vehicle, you know, where you might have 300 parts in the drivetrain. Uh, you know, one tenth of what's happening. And so there's going to be fewer parts. There's this massive shift. You know, shift away from oil. Shift away from different ways of engaging things back and forth. And because of that, th this is the source of the disruption. This is like. You know, the, when you have this much of a shift, this is why we have to look at the overall uh, concern. And so let's look back at Austin. Um, part of the thing I want to say is we'll talk about more about the innovation and entrepreneurial ecosystem here. But part of the thing I think is most interesting is to look at the history. I mentioned earlier in 1990 when I graduated with honors in engineering at UT, University of Texas at Austin, I couldn't get a job here. I mean, I, I couldn't get a, a job that was worthy of <laughs> my degree and stuff like that. I'm sure I could have gotten a very low paid job, but I couldn't get a job here. Um, Austin, in a very short period of time, he's like shifted from, you know, a government town that happens to have a big university in it that, you know, I went to, to something that's much more vibrant. And part of what I want to point to is is the dynamic that I think points to how we might think about the future. Certainly, um, when we look at which states are contributing the most to the U.S. GDP, uh, you, you know, we see California and Texas here. But what's interesting is Texas is growing faster than California is, and it's been sustainably growing. In fact, now uh, Texas is the eighth largest um, economy in the world. And so when we look at that, we might really dig into a little bit more about that. Now, I know today's program is about Austin, but when you look at Austin, since Austin is in the middle of what's called the Golden Triangle of Dallas, Dallas-Fort Worth, Houston, San Antonio, you know, the GDP growth of, of the Austin area and the Texas area is really been driven. But when we really focus in these core is, uh, these core areas are the things that we look to the most: energy, technology, healthcare, manufacturing, agriculture. These are the fundamental industries that we might really look into. And so Austin has become this boom town in a very short period of time. In recent announcements. Of just a few months ago, Tesla announced that it's going to put another 700 million into the Austin area. Apple, uh, 250 million, and Samsung. This actually should now list Samsung at 44 billion. Since I made this slide a few months ago, there's been a, another announcement. We'll hear just in a few slides about what President Biden announced just a few days ago. So uh, it continues to be this startup mecca valley that, uh, you know, we say far from Silicon Valley. There's been a lot of different people talking about that. Let's, let's go in more in depth about this. So the question might be, what made Austin Austin? There are three main drivers in that. And I mention this because part of what you'll want to look at as a business person is how do you plug into all three drivers? The, the first one is the city and state government. If you talk, you know, if you hear the governor of Texas speak, he'll tell you that, you know, Texas is a business friendly state and there's lots of business friendly activities that are happening. Same thing about Austin. The city and the state have, have policies that have been supportive of these activities. The second is the number of research organizations and universities here, places like Semitech, MCC, historically as well as uh, University of Texas at Austin, as well as you know all five of the major universities. And then there are smaller universities on top of that that have made this possible. But the, the, the part that I can speak about because I was one of the, the pioneers of is the entrepreneurial community. And in fact, I think even though we know that Dallas-Fort Worth has three times as many entrepreneurs in it as the Austin area, what sets Austin apart 
and creates more of this innovation ecosystem is this idea about how Austin continuously is in innovation. In the situation I mentioned earlier about in 1990, there was a uh, downturn in Texas because of oil and it directly affected what was happening here in Austin about people getting jobs. The, the city, um, the you know the fathers and the mothers of the city decided to invest heavily in differentiating what was happening here. We had a really beautiful underlying culture about how we worked with each other. In fact, this is one of the things that kept on bringing me back in Austin over and over and over during my career. But the uh, the thing that happened was we had to get away from the pure focus on energy that is oil, and that's why. You know, in a very short period of time, Austin's environment differentiated into quite a number of major Austin employers and uh, and startup tech companies. Now, you'll see some majors here. Of course, uh, one of the biggest news points is when Tesla moved its world headquarters to Austin. <clears throat> and can we, we can talk about some of the dynamics about that. Why did they choose Austin versus, say, San Antonio or Tech, you know, or Dallas? Part of it is the vibrancy of the community about how entrepreneurial this is here. And I, I point to that because, you know, um, if you're looking to Austin and looking to Texas to plug into is as part of your um, you know, business, say, I know some of the audience that will see this, uh, this broadcast and the recording that we make are going to be entrepreneurs around the world or, you know, business people around the world. Part of the thing to look at is not just the large organizations, because if you look at Dallas Fort Worth, you'll see more Fortune 500 companies, but you won't necessarily see the dynamic of growth that in response to the disruptions that I started this presentation with. And part of what I want to make sure that you see is that the plugging into this environment there's a reason to look specifically into Austin because of how dynamic the underlying environment is. I'm convinced that Austin will be one of the places that's going to be resilient into the disruptions that are coming. And I think that you'll see this based on some of the investments I'm just about to speak about. But part of what makes this possible is what, what's supporting the ecosystem is the incubators, accelerators, places like TechCrunch and Capital Factory, uh, government initiatives, the uh, co-working places, and the mentor networks. We've now, you know, the the big change over the last thirty years that I've been an entrepreneur here here is we have a lot of entrepreneurs that have had some measure of success. They, you know, have gone off, had exits, had you know, now have gotten back involved in the community. The number one thing that I could point to about Austin, and I'll say a little bit more about this on this next slide, is this whole idea. Of we have connective tissue. We have a lot of people that, um, in fact, when I say connective tissue versus density, it could be argued that if you go to Silicon Valley in California, that you can still find more activity and it's packed really, really tightly. But we have more connective tissue. The networks here, that is just if you land on the ground in Austin versus landing on the ground somewhere in Silicon Valley, Typically, you're able to get into the network faster. And why is that? Now, I have this picture of Keep Austin Weird off to the right. This is a saying that has been around for at least three decades. I don't know exactly when it started, but part of what happened for entrepreneurs like myself that came out as engineering students at UT, University of Texas, the key thing was this culture of mutual support. It, it was driven by... Uh, musicians here in Austin. That is, you know, uh, hippie musicians like like Janis Joplin and Willie Nelson just helping each other build, you know, build their their music their music practices together. It's like, hey, I'm going to help you out. You're going to help me out. It kind of speaks to what my grandfather, um, my mom's dad, as an example, as a farmer north of Austin did as well. It's like I'm going to help you get your crop out of the field. You'll help me with mine. You know, our families aren't that large and we certainly don't have enough money to just hire lots of people to do it. So we have to work together. And so that's one of the things that happens. But the thing that on top of that, that makes this really special place 
and such a great place to take risk and celebrate creativity is this this celebrating uniqueness. Um, you know, we we actually say, and and I say this because a lot of people might want me to do market maps and all sorts of other stuff, but I think more important is you as you look to engage in a market around the world and you know where you might be able to expand your business looking to a place that plugs in this is one of the features that really makes austin so innovative is that you know we, we have this expression among entrepreneurs like myself of hey let's just keep austin weird part of what this means is this is an okay place to take a risk and possibly fail in fact, uh, one of the reasons that I'm so proud of the work that I've done at, at, at TechRidge, I, I joke about this, but this is, there's truth in this about the entrepreneurs and mentors that you'll find in Central Texas, that is around the Austin area, is that we have a lot of scar tissue to donate to entrepreneurs and business people like yourselves. And we celebrate this in a way that you will see very distinct from a place like in Dallas, which is only three hours away by car. In that that we'll celebrate keeping Austin weird. It's like uh, it, it's just part of the culture that I want to make sure that I point to. And so this is why places like Samsung is now I mentioned on the previous slide that I had a uh, in, incorrect number. Samsung, as this is news from two days ago, Samsung pouring forty five billion dollars in the Austin area. One of the largest deals in U.S. history. This is in the chip manufacturing that's happening in there's a town a little bit north of Austin called Taylor, Texas. It happens to be where my grandfather had his farm all those years ago. But the uh, the thing that's interesting about this is uh, the U.S. federal government is really driving the, the change around chips and semiconductors. And now we're going to see this across the board of, of lots of different places. But when you're building semiconductor fabs, it takes a lot of cash. It takes a lot of different, you know, a skilled workforce. It takes a lot of different things. But the things that that's really driving this is the fact that all these unique um, disruptions are coming together in one place, uh, specifically around semiconductors in northern Austin. Now, this is an article that's from the uh, Austin Business Journal, uh, Austin Business Journal. You can find it online. And like I mentioned, this just came out a couple of days ago. One other one that happened that's interesting is. Uh, Flextronics, or it's now called Flex, just expanded its manufacturing base here. And the truth is that Austin already has low unemployment. And so as we start talking about economic connectivity of, of what today's program is all about, is all the opportunity that's shifting to Central Texas is not going to be possible alone by just Austinites. We're going to see, you know, all these different industries continue to grow. Now, I mentioned South by Southwest in the middle. This is a conference that's every March of every year here in Austin. Um, there's a lot to be said about the conference, but the thing that I want to say is when we say South by Southwest, what this implies is the South Road intersects with the Southwest Road. And at that point, something happens. Now, at the conference every year, one of the things that we see is we see you know, people from around the world coming together, sharing ideas back and forth. Austin is essentially that. And one of the things that about the innovation and entrepreneurial ecosystem that you can expect is this idea of none of these industries are number one in Austin. It's interesting to think about that night. Anyone watching this program would be able to say, hey, you know what? I think in each one of these, there's a different part of the world that could command more in each one of these industries. But if we look at the cross products, that is, I mentioned the South Road meets the Southwest Road, that's where you see in Austin, Austin taking off. And part of it is, I'll speak to in a few slides when I talk about the technology adoption life cycle. But part of the openness that we see with the notion of keep Austin weird is this idea that we have a lot of early adopters. We have a lot of people that are, you know, okay with risk. They actually will adopt technology much earlier. And so the, you know, even though say healthcare um, and biotech might be bigger in Houston, 
the cross products between you know big data and healthcare, you'll see more activity here locally than any one of the uh, areas. You could say that that they in the Houston area you've got a larger medical complex, which you certainly do, and it's an amazing complex. But you'll see more of the cross products between healthcare technology and say big data or other IT activities, maybe uh, AI type of activities here. And then part of the value of being here is then being able to connect into Austin. I mean, can, being able to connect into Houston is only a two and a half hour drive away. So it's still accessible. And that's partially what I want the, the, the story for you to see about how the networks are perhaps a little bit more open here, a little bit more um, able to, to intersect. And because of that, there's a different activity that is possible because of that. So we say that Austin's not just weird, but it's wired. You know, we call it the Silicon Hills. Um, it, you know, historically, this idea about it being the Silicon Hills, uh, there's lots of activity around semiconductor growth, but it's not just about that. There are five major universities here and then um, several smaller universities that make it possible. But probably the number one thing that I want to make um, a point to off this list is, especially if you're looking to plug into the U.S. market, and especially if you're looking to plug into Texas, you know the uh, the the eighth largest economy in the world is this cultural embracing creativity and risk taking. This is the key thing that actually is driving activities back and forth here. And while you see different things happening, let's speak more deeply about this. This is the technology adoption life cycle. I pulled this graphic right off of the. Uh, uh, right off of Wikipedia. In fact, if you have questions about this, you don't have to read Crossing the Chasm. There is a book called Crossing the Chasm that goes into more depth about, about this whole set of concepts. But even the Wikipedia page will inform you to, of the next step. The thing that I want you to notice is in the Austin area, we do have a lot of innovators, but most importantly, for those of you that are looking at engaging in this market, we have a lot of early adopters a good example, there are three different companies that are running um, tests of autonomous um, uh, taxi vehicles here in Austin. And there's been a lot of different activities. And part of the idea about this is the underlying culture. When you look at the United States and you're looking at engaging in a market to you know do U.S. market entry on, the key thing that I want to point to and suggest to you is to look for the places that will be early adopters. And what I mean by early adopters is people that are uh, that are that uh, will work with you um, even when your technologies are not completely finished. And the reason is that, that there's more of an openness to that. There's more risk-seeking activity that happens in this stage. And a lot of times I, I will talk to entrepreneurs that have successful businesses. Perhaps they have 50 or more employees already back in their home country. Um, and they're like, hey, well, we've already made what's in the lean startup practices called product market fit in the home country, the home market. And they're in the, purely in growth. Well, by definition, when you're entering into a new geographic market, you need to find a place that allows you to redo product market fit. That is figuring out, okay, the, the market for engaging for these products, whatever your product might be, you know, looking for people that have more risk seeking activity and that type of support. That's the key thing that we wanna be looking for. And I mentioned that because Austin has that, that this is one of the thing, things that I would actually um, make sure that you, uh, that, that you uh, look for. So part of the reason I'm so passionate about this is I was an Austin entrepreneur in 1994 when I started my first company. Many of my friends look at this photo and joke back when I still had hair. The, uh, the thing that's interesting about this is my first customer was a bank in Guadalajara, Mexico. I was, a early I, I was an early adopter technologist. That is, I was producing, I had, you know, at 24 years old, I come up with a piece of technology that was really unique in the world. Now, 30 years later, what I was doing back then is commonplace. But at the time, this was really advanced. And I happened to be able to find an early adopter in Mexico 
that allowed me to move very quickly. In fact, that first quarter million dollar customer, if I hadn't had that, you know, we don't know if I'd be an entrepreneur today, right? If I hadn't had that that chance of working with this this customer. And part of what I've always been fascinated with is how many times the early adopters for our technologies can be in a different country. In fact, part of the reason for the development of the tech ranch is exactly this. There's a quote by William Gibson that says, he's a science fiction writer. He says, the future is already here. It's just not widely distributed yet. And part of the reason that we start a tech ranch and we build these, um, these bridges back and forth to help entrepreneurs access markets is because, you know, of the second part, the, the second part on the slide is the Kevin Corm corollary. It's all the world's problems have already been solved. It's just a matter of connecting the entrepreneur, the solution to the market of the problem. And this is especially necessary right now. With all the disruptions that are happening, there are shifting supply chains around the world. And it's up to us as entrepreneurs to really redo those economic integration points. That's why I'm pointing to Austin about the Austin model of entrepreneurship, about how it's so open and how we can work together. But I don't mean to stop at the borders of Austin. That doesn't make any sense to me. That's not the reason that I developed the Austin model of entrepreneurship. It's not, that's not the purpose. What we're seeing is that there's ways as, as these disruptions take place, part of what we can do is we can organize around them and take advantage of this. And this is part of the work that we're here to do. And so what we're up to is building venture bridges and, and working, this is not just a tech reach thing. This is partially why I mentioned at the very beginning was we're real excited about partnering with the state of Chihuahua on building out venture bridges. And when I speak to the world right now with this broadcast, and you know, just because it says tech ranch in Austin and state of Chihuahua, bridges don't have to be just point to point. Now, the metaphor of a bridge says you have a firm base over here and you have a firm base over here. But one of the exciting things about building out these bridges is it opens up opportunities around the world. In fact, one of the Chihuahua um, entrepreneurs that we worked with, we helped him get him get his company to the United States. But then from that platform, he's now doing business in Italy. And we're really proud of the fact that you know this technology that was developed in uh, the city of Chihuahua and the state of Chihuahua came to Texas, got to the next level, and then from that place um, was able to be, is, is being integrated into a number of hospitals across Italy to check on patients on a daily basis on like on like different issues that might be happening to the patient. So quite literally, you know, uh, uh, life-saving technology out of Mexico coming to Texas and now leveraging off the platform that, that was being built in Texas to go to the world. Uh, starting with this this um, this idea of going to Italy and all the hospitals in Italy, real exciting stuff. That's why these venture bridges are so important. And Chihuahua is part of this picture. In fact, one of the reasons that I think is important for those of you that are not in Chihuahua that you might want to take advantage of this is um, it's about to be formally announced, and I'm not going to give the full announcement of it, but there will be a program that supports entrepreneurs, well, startup scale-up companies that have technologies that are need to be a part of this value chain that we're pointing to for landing in Chihuahua, landing in Texas here in Austin, and also landing in Chihuahua. And part of the thing you can see just by this picture of Mexico and the United States is you can see how central it is. In fact, there's quite a lot of activity, especially now happening between Chihuahua the state of Arizona and the state of Texas. And if you're interested in hearing more, happy to tell you more about this, um, get in contact with us and we'll we'll share some of the previous uh, webinars and things like that about what's happening. But there has been a very vibrant set of um, uh, activities that are happening to bridge between the two. Right here, we can see in the lower right of the photos, you can see the Secretary of Economy of the state of Chihuahua meeting with um, one of the Governor Abbott's appointed um, individuals in the semiconductor world. We'll see a lot more activity happening like this. 
And the key thing is, as this $45 billion investment is made, and as other billions of dollars of investments are made, it's, it's really critical that we work together to plug into these new value chains. The disruptions are coming. We see the disruptions happening. We see, again, specifically in electric vehicles, about how disruptions are going to disrupt energy. They're going to disrupt transportation. They're going to disrupt the, auto, disrupt the automobile activities. And so it's important to actually really align quickly and plug in with each other. And that's what you see photos of right here, right now. So to capture this opportunity, we have to coordinate this ecosystem and create regional connectivity. You know, we're working on a, a setting a, a set of um, situations for helping Mexican companies get financed out of that. And this is true for not just Mexican companies, since I know that part of the, the, the largest group, since I have done so much business in Mexico over the last 30 years, this slide is a little bit more focused between Texas and Mexico. But it's true for, for companies around the world about getting that type of financing to be able to plug in. To open up this innovation zone, that uh, and, and you see this specifically between the state of Chihuahua and the state of Texas about this innovation zone, but it's not isolated. Like if you're not just in one of those two places, you can still plug into this. And I suggest it strongly because of that. And then part of the work that TechRanch is doing is to really make sure that you have the market reports, the deep competitive insight, you know, knowing where is the expression goes, where's the puck going to? Where Where's the market going to? What's going to happen with these five different disruptions, actually, and the disruption beyond that? How do you plug into the right there? How do you have the practices associated with doing that? That's part of our work in the work that we do at TechRanch. And I can speak to some of the um, uh, activities that will be happening more in depth, if you'd like. For today's um, today's conversation, though, is really about the innovation and the entrepreneurial ecosystem of Austin, but I'll take questions on that. And in fact, in just a little bit, if you have questions, you can post them onto LinkedIn. My staff is going to help me, uh, my team is going to help me with getting questions off of YouTube and our Facebook um, uh, roles. If you see this video at some point in the future, whatever platform it's on, make sure you just post a comment onto there as well, and we'll do our best to respond back to your questions. But these are the four things that each one of us need to do to capture this opportunity together. It's not just about capturing it. No one wants to get Detroited. And what I mean by that is using Detroit, for those of you that just tuned in, you know, Detroit was the technology capital of the world for 60 years, and then all of a sudden, everything stopped. We want to make sure that we look at the opportunity of the future. We don't just go run and hide from the disruptions, but we engage with them heavily. And so because of that, we will have for, for entrepreneurs that are based out of the state of Chihuahua or have a specific opportunity that like at least part of your team is in Chihuahua, there is going to be, we're going to be taking on a cohort of 20 companies. And I'm excited about uh, uh, announcing this today. We've got it worked out with Startup Chihuahua, as well as some of the companies. This will be for Pymes, which stands for Pequeños y Medianos Empresas, which for those of you who don't speak Spanish, means small to medium-sized businesses. In fact, we'll even take larger businesses that want to apply. But part of what you can do and uh, if you want to find out more, is you can send an email to chihuahua at techranchaustin.com. If you have other questions, you can go into depth. Um, there's two different email addresses on this slide. Probably the easiest by far is just to send the messages to Chihuahua. Even if you're not a Chihuahua company, but you're interested in making sure that you find out about these announcements that the state of Chihuahua is about to announce, about how they're creating programs that will have financing available to land in the state of Chihuahua, feel free to send us a note about that as well. And as that is announced, we will make sure that we share that. But part of what we're looking for is a cohort of 20 companies to be a part of this, this process, this new economic integration, taking advantage of the openness of the innovation ecosystem here in Austin, as well as just the amount of technology disruptions that are happening. Um, there will be a variety of different areas. The main thing is we're not isolating this to specific industries other than 
you know, you should look at the technologies that are that are in the areas and suggest. And that being said, a lot of times the biggest opportunity that I want to make sure I point to is in these cross products. You know, the strength of Austin has historically been not just because it had, you know, a depth of knowledge in one area, but it was because innovation happens when you take this technology and you cross it with that technology and something new um, develops out of that. So you do not have to be in one specific industry if you see one of those type of opportunities. When you write to us, tell us what you're uh, working on, tell us what you're considering. We will send, uh, the, the formal process will step in right after that and we'll send you a form that you can fill out. But for this first stage, if you have an inquiry, you should just let us know and and by telling us about that. All right, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take us off of the slide for just a second. I'm gonna look to my team. I don't know, I know I have a studio audience right now that might have questions. You can use the chat to share questions in, um, in the chat, as well as I will look to the LinkedIn real quick. Uh, to my team, if you have any, if you've already detected that there's questions or otherwise, please let me know and uh, I will do my best. I know that we have a number of different people who are watching online. And let me see if I can actually uh, catch those questions back and forth. Is there anyone, let's see, uh, anyone in the studio audience that would like to ask as well? You can actually even come on a line. I know that uh, that uh, sometimes that can be a little bit intimidating, but I'd love to have uh, someone ask questions directly. Okay, uh, um, to my team, I don't see, for whatever reason, LinkedIn is not showing me the, the actual commentary. I will try to do my best to go to one of the other um, areas as well, but if we do have questions, please let me know. One more second. Let's see. I'm going to click over to the other area. Okay, well, I tell you what, I'm not seeing a lot of questions back and forth. And since we do have, I see a number of people that are watching the stream, but uh, no no comments there just yet. So what we'll do is we'll make sure that we have a follow-up um, information session for companies that are interested in specifically getting into the cohort. Today really is more generally about Austin. Um, I, I could gladly take more questions about you know, like some of the bioscience type of technologies that are happening here. You know, obviously some of the, the latest battery technology in the world was developed, like the lithium ion um, battery was developed with technology that was developed at the University of Texas at Austin. So if you do have questions about that, um, I'm noticing I'm getting lots of other questions that are showing up over here on my phone, but not showing up on the, um, not showing up on my screen here. So let me just see if I can answer that real quick. Yeah, so uh, just uh, thank you for the nice comments back and forth that are going on the on the uh, the thing there uh, on the uh, on the stream. I tell you what. Uh, oh wait, here's another question. What other what uh, other activities, places, or events apart from South by Southwest should entrepreneurs know about Austin? <clears throat> Sounds great. Every fall, well, typically there the two main uh, times of the year is during the spring and during the fall. Uh, during the summer, a lot of people. Um, Austin kind of kicks back a little bit and takes it easy. Um, but uh, the another time to consider coming to um, to Austin if you're a earlier stage company is during Startup Week. Uh, this typically happens between ACL, which is called Austin City Limits. What is Austin City Limits? There's both a PBS um, public broadcasting um, program that celebrates all the music that's happened in Austin for the year. But every year now, you know, on one Saturday to another Saturday, there are music festivals and it's a three day festival, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, followed by the week, followed by Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So if you're into music, you can come for one of the weekends. But in the between that, typically there is uh, Austin Startup Week and there's a number of different activities that will be happening. Capital Factory usually takes the lead in organizing this, but there will be 20 plus places that you can take free classes and plug in and stuff like that. It's a great time to be here as well. 
Um, another time is Formula One racing happens here at the um, uh, Circuit of the Americas in Austin. And so we get quite a lot of people, since Formula One is like the lead of automobile technology, we get quite a few people that come in for Formula One as well. And if you're into Formula One, especially, you don't have to even go to the race day on the Sunday, but you can go on to this one of the qualifications on Friday. It's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So you might look to the Formula One if you're into that, and especially if you have technology that plugs into that group of people. Um, the other surprising thing about that is the number of high net worth people from around the world. Um, like it's my understanding that every year around 2,500, you know, um, 2,500 jets, private jets fly into Austin at that time. It can be a little bit more difficult to get a hotel room, so you need to plan ahead. But one of the things that's beautiful about that is if you have technologies that are in that area or in the area of the people that might be flying in, it's a great time to plug into that as well. Those are the different events. Then there's a lot of activities that are happening that are online that you can plug into. In fact, because of what happened with COVID, Austin has become much more of an online um, place to plug into. You'll have big events where you can actually, uh, you know, go to the event. Like last night, there was a, uh, let me look it up just to be specific about it. Last night, there was a overview of AI in 2024. And this was, um, it's it runs at the Austin Central Library. Um, it uh, is actually one of my friends started this organization um, it's a great thing to plug into, but it's, you know, uh, you could look for this as well. And one of the great things that Jay has now done is made this event available online as well. And so you'll have half the audience at the Austin Public Library and half the audience there too. We post a lot of those activities onto the Tech Ranch events calendar, just because it's such a great open event that you might look into that as well. Another place to plug into is the Austin Technology Council. Austin Technology Council has a number of closed events, but then for their membership, but then a lot of open events as well. So you can look them up at Austin Technology Council. If you're interested in finding out more about different technologies and what's happening in the ecosystem as well, look to the Austin Chamber of Commerce, as well as Opportunity Austin, and I tell you what, if you do send and you would like a follow on, one of the offers I make is if you send us an email to that same email address that I mentioned earlier, I'll see to it that we send you back a list of company, uh, not companies, but a list of places to plug into for the next level of details. Everything from if, uh, if you want to look at the 9,000 startups that are across uh, Texas, I can point you to that list so you can get a sense of it. I can um, also point you to uh, the ecosystem uh, companies as well with some free sites. If you look at Austin Chamber of Commerce, you'll you'll be able to do that. If you go to texas.dealroom.co, texas.dealroom.co, you can find out more as well. Do I have any other questions? I appreciate that question. Thank you, Mariana. Looks like we have a fairly quiet group today. So what I'll make sure I'll remind you of is the uh, the thing to do is, first off, if you're a company that has, you know, startup or scale up or otherwise that has activities that you're doing in Chihuahua, I would strongly suggest taking advantage of this program that's that it's on the screen right now um, that's funded by the Chihuahua government. Take advantage of it. It's totally there for you to to take a part of. And you know, we'll have activities that more more generally. We're going to have a cohort of twenty companies, but uh, the truth is that we'll have other activities that are for. You know, there's a lot of free broadcasts that we do, so make sure that you're on our radar. Make sure that we know how to get a hold of you again. But uh, we will pick twenty companies with the state of Chihuahua for this program and with Startup Chihuahua. Um, as well as with um, Emprende Juarez, uh, let's see, the, the Red Emprende de Juarez as well, and several other, other groups. We'll, we'll be picking this, this cohort of companies. We're going to start this fairly quickly. So if you're interested, you should send the email today or tomorrow, just from the standpoint of getting on our radar. 
But um, if you're interested as well in finding out more about the program that the state of Chihuahua is about to announce, that would have landing dollars or actually pesos available for landing in Chihuahua to enliven that community as well, make sure that you send us a note too and we'll gladly follow up with you. And then more generally, if you're if you're an entrepreneur that's not uh, not in Texas, not in Chihuahua, not going to be doing that sort of stuff, but you would like to find out more, like one of the most powerful things we've done over the last year of working with the state of Chihuahua is we have Japanese firms that are landing into Chihuahua and taking advantage of the the new supply China, uh, lines as well. And there's other places in the world that will be doing the same because the opportunity is so massive that even if we took as China is getting displaced um, by Mexico and other areas in the uh, in the Americas for manufacturing here, the opportunity is bigger than just all of the country of Mexico. And so certainly um, there were opportunities for other entrepreneurs in the world. And, you know, let us know how we can help you plug into that. That being said, um, it's my honor to, to have this opportunity today in conjunction with the state of Chihuahua, Chihuahua Global and Startup Chihuahua to, um, to have this uh, program together. We look forward to finding out more about what you're up to. If you have questions, you can follow up with us either at that email or go to techranch.com slash connect. And we'll tell you more about all the different uh, ways of plugging into this network. The, the time is now for us to take advantage of the disruptions. The disruptions are coming, even if we don't want them to. Perhaps they, there's some positives and negative things that are naturally going to happen out of that. It's really critical that we take advantage of this and we organize now for making sure that out of all these disruptions, we create positive change in the world. And so TechBank is happy to be your partner in that. Let's go change the world for the better together. Everyone take care and thank you. Let us know your questions. If you have any questions, we'll, we'll look forward to catching up with you again soon. Thank you for that. And that's it for today.